Good afternoon. You are with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Um, committee, we're going to shift gears now before the 2.30 floor session to hear from Representative Donahue. We have already taken a look at the, uh, the substance and the words on the page, and I just need to let Representative Gannon know that we are coming back to S25 right now, and then um, Rep. Donahue, we will welcome you to, uh, to, to give us your pitch on why you'd like us to consider this. Thank you. I'd like uh, Representative Gannon to be able to get back here though. So hang on just a moment. He is in appropriations on another bill. Representative Anthony. Uh, not to revisit uh, your decision, but I assume it would be Okay, if Tucker actually started to figure out where he would go uh, when we return to this in January in terms of what pieces are contingent on other pieces that we have agreed with him to delete or to uh, go ahead with the technical changes, nothing stops him from essentially beginning to create a draft that we will look at uh, in January, or is that just implicit in, in our decision, Madam Chair? Well, I would guess that if we're not dividing out the easy technical changes in order to move them now, that he would want to have more guidance from the committee about how to move forward on another draft. Um, and since it seems to be not consensus, but the leaning of the committee um, towards delaying that, um, I think we can give him permission to set it on the back burner. Um, Let's see, I have not heard back from Gannon yet. All right, I don't want us to um, take too, oh, excellent. Representative Gannon has run back from the Appropriations Committee down the hall. So Representative Donahue, take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, so I understand you've, you've looked at the language and I, uh, just a quick background. Obviously I was um, disappointed yesterday by decision not to enhance the statute regarding uh, the General Assembly's priority to not promote increase in use. Um, but I did see a small way to still enhance that priority. And that would be to restore the Department of Health as the source of health information um, in the labeling requirements that were adopted by the House last year. Um, last year, your committee asked um, the Health Committee, Healthcare Committee, uh, for input on the bill. And this had originally come from our recommendation that um, the health information should be developed directly by the board, by the uh, health department, not by the board just consulting with the health department. Um, and that got uh, removed by the Senate. So um, obviously the question would be if they didn't agree, why would we think there'd be a different outcome now? What, what would be the point? And I think we've had a year's worth of history that um, tells us a lot about the issue of following the science. We've seen the difference across the country between following the science versus um, authorities that allowed other interests and pressures to influence what the health expert opinions were. 
Um, in Vermont, we chose to follow the science, the expertise of the Bar Vermont Department of Health, even if there were some folks who disagreed and thought there were other interests, interests that needed to be balanced in. Um, so I, I think it goes back to, therefore, the Commissioner of Health should be the source of health warnings, uh, not it being a board decision based only on consultation uh, with the Department of Health. So the proposal only addresses those places where the House uh, proposal had made that recommendation. There are other places in the bill where there is in consultation uh, with the uh, Department of Health rather than uh, warnings developed directly by the Department of Health. But this proposal is only addressing where the House adopted that, um, which means the, the warning on labeling that's required under the statute um, by cultivators and by manufacturers and restoring the warning information to patients from the Department of Health under the uh, med medical uh, cannabis um, existing stat statute, which was removed by the Senate um, in its uh, in its in its position and in ultimately in the conference committee. So that's that's the background and and uh, why I think it is a way that we can um, help ensure that um, accurate health information is what ends up. Um, rather than information that comes uh, via a balancing of interests by the board um, when we um, could choose to make it the health expertise of our Department of Health. All right, thank you, Representative Donahue. Questions from committee members for Representative Donahue? Representative Gannon. Thank you, and thank you, Representative Donahue, for presenting this amendment this afternoon. Um, why do you think that the Cannabis Control Board, if it consulted with the Department of Health, instead of having the Department of Health um, design these warnings, do you, do you think there's going to be a difference, a different outcome, it, with respect to the warnings? I think there could very well be because they will be hearing from and having pressure from other um, other stakeholders uh, who may say, well, you know, that sounds a little scary. It might scare away some buyers um, if they get that um, that full uh, a set of information. Um, so I, I think the board is in a position where it's supposed to be listening to um, different input um, and consulting with the Department of Health does not mean following all of its recommendations. And I think this is an instance where it should be um, the health information provided by our Department of Health that would be on the specific health warnings that we're requiring. Thank you. Which, which, which was what we, uh, which was what the healthcare committee recommended last year, and and which, um, on that rationale, um, last year the the government's uh, operations committee um, supported that language, on, on that rationale. No, and, and Representative Donahue, I, I realize that, and I appreciate the work of the committee on healthcare to to look at S fifty four last year. Um, one of my primary concerns right now given that we're within days of adjournment, um, is that this could serve as a poison pill to the Senate. Um, and I, I am truly worried about that. I mean, they were opposed to this language in the conference committee just last summer. Um, and I am not aware that they have changed their position today, as of today. Yeah, as, as I referenced, I, I understand that concern. I really think that, that the past year has taught us a lot and that we've seen the difference between states that balanced uh, interests versus states that followed um, their health department's expertise. And, and I think we've all learned from that. We all, um, large variety, uh, majority of Vermonters believe that our health commissioner uh, was the right person to be listening to and that Vermont did well by following that. 
Um, so I can only assume that uh, members of the Senate would also have felt that way and um, that that would affect their decision-making about following the health science. So Representative Donovan, you, can I offer a possible compromise? And I actually have not discussed this with anyone else on the, the committee, so I may get in trouble for, for even making me nervous, this. Representative Gannon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, what, but what if we had the Department of Health report back um, to both, you know, House and Senate um, GovOps and, and House and Senate Healthcare with respect to the collaboration between the Department of Health and the Cannabis Control Board with respect to these warnings um, so that we would have an opportunity to assess whether in fact the appropriate collaboration occurred and whether the warnings that the Department of Health wanted um, were acceptable to the Cannabis Control Board and were implemented. So you're suggesting yeah. that we would um, specifically ask the Department of Health to come and tell us whether it was uh, an acceptable collaboration. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, I think that obviously that's not as as clean cut as as saying that that they should um, do it, but that, that's certainly a very reasonable way of. Uh, I, I understand the concern about the the timing of the session and uh, not, you know, not blowing up the whole process. Um, so if the committee felt that that was um, that was more acceptable and that was uh, not likely to to create the problems you're identifying. I, I think it, it, at this point in the session, it probably would be a reasonable way to address it. Thank you. How's the committee feel about that? I'm seeing some thumbs ups. Representative Higley has his hand up. No, I just wanted to say, I think that's a real reasonable compromise and I can certainly support it. Okay. Um, let's see if we can speak with legislative council. Um, Anne, are you inclined to make a substitute amendment? Yes, I would be, I would be happy to do that. Okay. Um, so Michelle, just want to make sure that, um, you understand the direction the committee is heading. Um, and that is to ask for the department of health to give us a report back to both house and Senate government operations committees, um, January 15th. I mean, we're not going to get to it on the first day of the session and, um, will, will the, will those be developed by then so that the feedback is representative of an outcome? I, I don't know for sure because I don't think it ha I don't think that that packaging material and inserts and educational material would necessarily be required until sales start in when in May. Yeah, that would be my concern. I would push the date back uh, a little bit more distance so that the process had actually occurred to be able to you know, tell us how they felt the process went. So Michelle, do you have a sense of the timeline or do you have it in front of you? Or if we just wait long enough, Representative Gannon's gonna look it up. <laughs> I mean, I think they, right now, they didn't change anything with regard to the deadline for rulemaking. And so rulemaking is supposed to be completed by March 1st. And so, uh, you know, those types of things with regard to what's going to be included in the labeling and stuff like that is going to be in the rules. So you can do it in January in the sense that they will be well underway with rulemaking and the proposed rules will be out there, or you could wait until the final rules are adopted. It's your choice. What would be the estimated date for final rules being adopted? It's supposed to be March 1st. I mean, I... Oh, of next year. Yeah. Okay. Next year. They haven't asked for more, but, uh, you know, realistically, you know, we, we know how long rules can take and especially on something like this, where there's going to be a lot of comments, a lot of public input, you know, a lot of voices, you know, but March 1st might be a good if they ask place. for a little bit of a delay. Right. March 1st would sounds like a good place. And then if there's a delay, we could, you know, say, hold off a little on the report, but it's probably a better place to start than January 15th. That's my reaction anyway. 
make sense to the committee? All right. So we don't have a substitute amendment in front of us, um, but I believe since we all understand what we're going for, we could straw poll that at this point. Um, and we do need to be back on the floor in about seven minutes. So I would prefer to take a straw poll and let uh, Representative Gannon and Representative Donahue and Legislative Council work on the final nuances of it. Does that make sense, committee? Okay, so since this is a straw poll, I will be looking for your physical thumbs up on the screen. So all those in favor of asking for the Department of Health to give us a report back in March as to their collaboration on the design, I'm seeing 11 thumbs around the table. Okay, excellent. I thank the committee and particularly uh, Representative Gannon for uh, creative, collaborative, uh, on the spot brainstorming. He is creative, that is true. Thank you, Representative Gannon and thank you, Representative Donahue for helping us um, figure out a way that we can um, have a check back on this important issue. All right, uh, Michelle, is there anything else you need from us before we sign off? Probably not. She's probably already ready to start drafting the, uh, the new amendment. So, all right. So committee that, um, thank you so much for your hard work this afternoon. And that completes our committee work for the day. And Madam chair. Or, yes. I, I see representative, uh, again, I may have the same question. Do you want to uh, advise the speaker of the status of, uh, because I, I'm not sure, but I think it may be called up soon since it was supposed to be up this morning. Yes, it is. I think it's supposed to be first on the docket at 2.30. So I will certainly communicate with her. Um, Mad Madam Chair, I just wanted to update um, the committee on House Appropriations. House Appropriation reviewed H-135, the Ethics Commission bill um, and approved on a straw vote um, the um, half position. So we're ready to move on that as well. All right. I will let the speaker know that we are good to go on that as well. Yeah.